guys, Mr. Klein here. We are talking about mountain building, Chapter 8, Lesson 3, an extension of the previous lesson on uh, landforms at plate boundaries. We're going to focus essentially on what happens when two continental plates collide. They form mountains. So let's get going. But in this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Question number one, how do mountains change over time? And question number two, how do different types of mountains form? So let's get started. Okay. Big huge wall of text here, but we're going to go through it. The mountain building cycle. How do mountains form? How do mountains collapse and stuff? Mountain ranges form slowly, and they change slowly over millions of years. Okay, If you remember, plates colliding together will form mountains. Okay, So we're operating under this thing that sooner or later, or way back in the past, we had two continents that collided, and they formed a mountain. Now. Because many different types of collisions occur to form mountains, mountains are made of very different types of rocks. I can show you mountains that are made of sedimentary rocks. I can show you mountains that are made of igneous rocks. I can show you mountains made of metamorphic rocks. No matter what type of rock is there, mountains are made out of them. Now, what brings mountains down over time is mainly through the processes of weathering and erosion. And they can carry away all or parts of mountains. In fact, we find some hills uh, that are that seem to be the roots of mountains. Okay, that they might only be a couple of feet high, but several tens of hundreds of millions of years ago, they were actually tall mountains. But weathering wore them down, and erosion carried away the materials that made them. Now, how mountains are made? When plates collide at a convergent plate boundary, combination of fold and faulting and uplifting will form mountains. Okay. And the forces that originally brought the plates together can become inactive after many millions of years. What happens is, throughout paleontologists or paleogeologists have seen throughout the history of the Earth, is that actually there have been several different continents, okay, more than just North America, South America, whatever, that actually continents are actually chunks of smaller continents come together. And what's happened is the forces that brought them together have slowed down and stopped over time. So when the plate boundary is no longer active, one new continent is formed from the two old continents. North America is an example of this, and I'll show you in a moment. Because with no compression at a convergent plate boundary, the mountains will stop growing. So let's look at North America. These, these lines I have right here are actually uh, evidences of convergent plate boundary collisions, and actually some divergent plate boundaries, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the Rocky Mountains right here are a result of a continental collision. Uh, these mountain ranges right here, uh, several Sierra Nevadas, the coastal range, things like that are a result of plate collisions more recently. Uh, the Appalachian Mountains, if you remember from geologic history, are a result of a really old mountain range over time. But we also have some divergent plate boundaries that at one time we probably had mountains in the area. Okay, and this broad line, it's a generalized one, it's not exact, is evidence of a rift valley, and if you notice it, it forms the eastern side of the Mississippi River. Uh, scientists believe that the western part of North America, or a chunk of it, collided with the eastern part long ago. And in addition, the Ohio River Valley, going into Canada and Quebec, formed another rift valley, uh, where the continents came together and separated slowly over time. That actually, the beginning of North America was actually this part around here, around Hudson Bay. But over time, uh, the tectonic forces brought all of these chunks of the Earth's crust together, squished them together, and over time they slowed down and they stopped to form the continent that we're at now. So what happens once uh, these forces stop? Well, what ends up happening is the movement of Earth's tectonic plates cause the continents to always be changing. Okay, They'll shift and they'll move one way or the other, but sooner or later these will stop. So. Like what I just talked about, those rift valleys, a divergent plate boundary forms when a continent forms close to the place where the two plates first collided. Okay, uh, The St. Lawrence River Valley in Canada is a good example of it. Uh, a very shallow river valley would be considered the Mississippi River Valley, but the most common example we think of today is the Great Rift Valley in Africa. And so what's essentially happening is Africa is being pulled into two pieces. And so this large split or rift has formed. And over tens of millions of years, eventually Africa will split in half. And what will happen is water will fill into it, forming an ocean. Okay, So that's divergent plates and when a divergent plate boundaries and continents begin pulling apart. But what happens at places that are pretty much quiet tectonically? Well, 
Now, what will happen is weathering will round the peaks and lower the elevations of mountain ranges. For example, the Appalachian Mountains are a good example of that. Here's Mount Mitchell, the highest point east of the Mississippi River, about 6,800 feet above sea level. At one time, it was probably around 26, 27,000 feet above sea level. But over time, weathering and erosion have brought down this elevation. They've, weathering has broken down the rock material. Erosion has carried it away. Now, as a mountain erodes, if you remember from the lesson earlier in this chapter about forces of state that, that shape Earth, the roots under it much rise to restore the balance between what's left of the mountain and how it floats on the Earth's surface. Okay? How it floats on top of the mantle, rather. Okay? And this is what we call istosis. Remember that balance between uh, uplift and downlift is istosis. And essentially, as a mountain erodes, the root of the mountain gets pu pushed up in order to ro keep that istosis taking place. Now, Rocks deep under continents rise slowly toward Earth's surface because of this. Especially in old mountain ranges, you can tell the age of a mountain range generally by the types of rocks there. But the oldest, most weathered mountain ranges, metamorphic rocks, they form deep below the surface or exposed on top of mountains. The Appalachian mountain range is full of metamorphic rocks like this. Okay, so let's talk about the types of mountains and how they form. Uh, from there. There's three major types. There's a fourth one that what we call volcanic mountains, but those are formed by volcanoes, which we'll discuss later when we actually talk about volcanoes themselves. So let's get going. The first one, let's establish that plate movements can change the positions of rocks within a mountain range. The first type is what we call folded mountains. Okay, essentially the mountains are folded, just like you bring pieces of paper together and the rocks actually fold. What happens is when erosion removes the upper part of the crust, the folds are exposed for their surface for you to see them. For example, this is the Zagros Mountains in Iran. You can obviously see the folding of the rock there. What's happened is at one time the continents were pushed together, okay, and heat and pressure bent the rocks without breaking them because they became plastic. Now, these folds are perpendicular to the force of compression that create them because remember compressive forces occur at plate boundaries where at convergent plate boundaries where they come together so the bin like this okay the bin like this is a result of pressure coming up in this way so let's go ahead and let's look at the Zagros mountains where we can see that so let's go ahead let's leave school and let's go to Dina mountain all the way in Iran or you can see folded mountains in action. This is one of the highest mountains in the Zagros mountain range. Okay, and if we look, we can see we can see the actual folds themselves. If we go around, we look at these mountain ranges. If you look off in the distance, you'll actually see the movement of the mountains. And if we go up, bring it back vertically. Okay. We can see this more clearly. The mountain range forms a these series of folds. All along the Zagros mountain range are the results of the continents being pushed together. And if you notice right here, these mountain color changes, of course, are different layers of sediment. They can form conformities and unconformities that we can figure out the age of them. If we look along this line, you see these lines from here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's head back to school. And just like that, we're here. And let's talk about the next type of mountains. Okay, now, what happens, this is the second type of mountains, is that you don't have the actual folding. Rather, you have rocks breaking and forming faults. Parallel ridges that form where blocks of crust move up along faults are what we call fault block mountains. Uh, this is the second type, and we'll look at a type here in the United States. Uh, so what happens with fault block mountains is if the tension that caused the mountains to form in the first place pulled in an east-west direction, the mountains will form ridges oriented in a north-south direction. Remember, it stays perpendicular. Fault block mountains will often have a high ridge next to a valley between these two landforms. Okay? And between them, what we'll have is we'll have a fault for the movement that caused these landforms to occur. So essentially, fault block mountains are essentially where the continent is actually broken due to 
stresses and stuff like that. And so what you'll end up having is you'll have a series of mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley that shows this. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's look over here in California and we'll look at Telescope Peak in the Basin and Range Province. Uh, before we get there, let's zoom out and let's look. If you notice, these white areas are essentially valleys. We have valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, so on and so forth. And so these are essentially breaks in the fault, the, the fault lines are essentially breaks in the continent. And so let's look, let's go ahead and let's go on Telescope Peak and let's look at this topography. For instance, if I bring you down, this is Telescope Peak right here. If we look to the west, we see the valley, we see the mountain, and this mountain range is a little bit lower so we can actually see the valley. But if we look across right here, we see this really low valley. This valley right here is actually Death Valley. The lowest point in the United States is about 500 something, 500 ish feet below sea level. Okay? And so here's some of the topography and stuff. And as you can see, that over time, you've had a lot of, you've had a lot of water wash in over the years. And this is mainly through erosion and deposition. Okay? And here is an actual valley fan, uh, delta fan, formed as a result of this. And that's that mountain that we were just at earlier, Telescope Peak. This is from the bottom of the valley. But the Basin and Range Province in the United States is a great example of this in that you have a mountain, valley, mountain, valley. And essentially the mountain is where the continent itself broke and that's where the fault line comes and so the drop is the actual valley itself so let's go ahead and let's head back to school and let's look at the next type of mountain type so here let's look at the th and see here before we go this is real quick uh, shots of basin and range as you can see this is from the valley at the bottom mountain at top so the third type is actually mountains that kind of sit up all by themselves and these are what we call uplifted mountains. They form where large regions of land rise with very little deformation of the Earth's crust. Scientists aren't exactly sure how uplifted mountains form, but one theory that they posited is that uplifted mountains form when sinking mantle from the crust pulls downward at the Earth's crust. In order to maintain isostasy, a chunk of the Earth's crust actually pushes up. Okay? And so as a result, this forms pretty tall mountains that form in single places. So once again, to recap this theory, in order to, for continents to mean isostasy, which that's the balance between upward and downward forces, whatever goes down must come up, okay? And whatever goes up must come down, okay? Newton's third law in action. And so what happens is a chunk of the Earth's crust sinks down into the mantle, and as a result of this pulling down, we have uplift that pushes up this example, these mountains. And they form pretty tall mountains. An example of it is also in California, and it's Mount Whitney. And if we can go and we can go ahead and take a look at it. And so let's go ahead and let's look at Mount Whitney right here. So we slide over. And it's not that far, but Mount Whitney is essentially an uplift mountain. La Mount Whitney is the highest peak uh, in the continental United States outside of outside of Alaska and as you can see this mountain essentially sits all by itself okay there's not a lot of deformation or anything like that there's some smaller mountains but BAM Mount Whitney right there out in the middle of nowhere uh, within the range and so this mountain range is considered to be an example of that and so that's the mountain as, con as seen from uh, its surrounding area so Let's look at the final type of mountain, volcanic mountains. They are special kind of mountains. Volcanic mountains will form when molten rock erupts on the Earth's surface and hardens. And of course, through isostasy, the more volcanic mountains are a result of this. Volcanic mountains that are dormant are mountains that haven't erupted, uh, volcanoes that haven't erupted in a while. And so what happens is this, this uplift that's uh, formed as a result of the lava being put on there pushes down other parts of the Earth's crust in order for this to happen. Now, most, most volcanic mountains are actually dormant. They're not really erupting. Uh, and so, but that doesn't mean that they won't, have an, they won't erupt someday soon. A good example of that was Mount St. Helens, which we'll talk about in our lesson on volcanoes, that sat there dormant for a really long time, started showing examples of eruption, and exploded back in 1980. And so there's another example of uh, 
a volcanic mountain I want to show you, and it's in Japan. And so let's go ahead and let's look at that, and that's Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji, of course, is the famous mountain, and as we fly across, across the Pacific, let's go to Japan, and let's look at Mount Fuji. Or Mount Fujiyama, it's a very, very famous mountain. It's climbed by many regularly. It's regularly spewing off gas uh, in there, but it is considered an active volcano. And it's very, it's very attractive. It's a very famous landmark. You can actually see it from Tokyo. Uh, but the mountain, Mount Fuji, as you can see, rises above the rest of the landform in the area. Okay. And so if we actually, if we go and we turn and we start heading out this way, we'll actually see, it's another one. Let me get it fixed back up where it needs to be. You can actually see from Mount Fuji, you'll actually be in the area that leads to Tokyo and the area from there. And so that's where, that's where Tokyo has that famous view of Mount Fuji going from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's wrap up today's lesson. Uh, and this is the example of Mount Fuji from there. So by the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer the following questions. How do mountains change over time? Well, mountains change over time by being weathered and eroded and older rocks rising to the surface in order to main, maintain isostasy. And how do different types of mountains form? Well, there's three major types plus volcanic mountains, so let's review them real quick. Folded mountains form when rocks on Earth's surface are folded through collisions of tectonic plates. Okay, they come together, folded mountains, the actual pressure folds the rocks in order to form the mountains. Fault block mountains form when divergent forces within a continent create faults as the continent pulls apart. Falls apart, piece of it breaks, piece of it drops, forms a valley, the piece sticking up forms the mountain. Finally, uplifted mountains form when pieces of the crust sink into the mantle and pieces of the crust rise to maintain equilibrium. Mount Whitney is a good example of this. And in addition, volcanic mountains operate under the same principle. So there's your lesson on mountain building. Hope it wasn't terribly boring. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.